right, guys, so today we're going to talk about the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. Um, in the summer of 1787, um, the Constitutional Convention essentially was um, where we see the ratification process take place. Um, delegates start to draft um, a new document, um, our Constitution. Um, at first, going into this convention, they thought that they could revise the Articles of Confederation. Um, however, they soon realized that uh, the best option is to actually throw out the Articles of Confederation and replace it with a stronger document that uh, essentially strengthens the central government, um, creates this large republic, um, but it still allows for uh, state power uh, or reserved powers for the states. Um, major issues were brought up between large and small states as delegates work through this process of creating the Constitution and figuring out how it should be uh, written and how our government should be um, established. All right, so to start us off here, federal is just a system of government in which sovereign sovereignty is constitutionally divided between a central governing authority and constant, constant um, political units. So essentially, this just means a sharing of power, a sharing of power between our federal government and our state governments. Um, this could also be called federalism. Okay, so it's when you, again, have a central government and state governments that share power. Um, there's going to be some powers that are just for the states, and then some powers that are just for the central government, and then, again, some that they share, which are known as concurrent uh, powers. Federalists, those were the per people who supported, or the delegates that supported the Constitution, and then our anti-federalists are those who did not support um, the Constitution. Um, our anti-federalists were in support of um, farmers, the rural areas, um, the states, um, they believed that it was illegal to throw out the Articles of Confederation, which in some ways it was, um, and they also did not feel that the Constitution was upholding our liberties, and these were some of the reasons why they were against um, the, the Constitution. Now, the Federalists, on the other hand, again, were in support of the Constitution. They believed that we needed to have a stronger, stronger central government power. Um, why? Well, one example would be we needed the power to tax. We needed the, the ability to have money in order to do the things that government is supposed to do. And uh, if we don't strengthen the central government, then we can't do simple things like tax the people. Um, so they are going to write a series of papers called the Federalist Papers, where they'll try to convince people to support uh, the Constitution, and they'll be successful in doing so. Um, and then they wanted to point out that, you know, the states aren't completely losing power. Um, with the Ninth and Tenth Amendment, um, there would be some state power. And so Federalists believe this is the perfect balance. This is, this is the best balance between central power and state power. Um, this, this is the right solution. Um, they were in support uh, also as, um, sorry, in support of the manufacturers and the big business leaders um, rather than the farmers with the anti-federalists. Okay, so who was on each side? Um, here are some of the delegates that were on each side. Federalists, we have Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and John Jay. And then the anti-federalists, we have Patrick Henry, Samuel Adams, and Richard Henry Lee. And James Madison is going to write several um, of the Federalist papers. Um, specifically 10 and uh, 51. Okay, so again, the Federalists were wealthy, very well educated. Um, they had a desire for a powerful centralized government. Leaders in this on this side were George Washington and Benjamin Franklin. Um, they believed orderly, efficient government could protect their economic status and controlled elections of ratifying conventions with their power and influence. Um, and so I want to point out just briefly that before um, we see these two groups form, so the Federalists, the Anti-Federalists, and even during their formation, there really was no political party, essentially. No Republican Party or Democratic Party had not formed yet. 
And so this is kind of the first divide that we see as far as political parties, um, Federalists and Anti-Federalists. And over time, what we see happen is these two uh, groups or separation in ideas kind of eventually form into our Republican and Democratic Party and then other parties as well. <clears throat> All right, Anti-Federalists, again, we're farmers, um, middle-class people, loyal to their state governments. Leaders included Samuel Adams, Patrick Henry. They wanted the Bill of Rights um, added to the Constitution. That was one of their big things is they felt like the Constitution was not upholding our liberties. And so a Bill of Rights needed to be added in order to ensure that our liberties were upheld. Um, they feared the powerful central government, especially because of what we had witnessed with Great Britain uh, or been a part of with Great Britain, uh, especially powers of tax taxation. And we believed, sorry, a Republican government could not rule a nation as large as uh, America. Okay, so why were the Federalists so successful? Uh, because they are successful and they will get 9 out of 13 states uh, to ratify the Constitution. Hamilton and Madison and Jay worked together. Um, Anti-Federalists did not seem to do that. Uh, Federalists also had money and influence. Um, again, they were in support of, and even some of them were, uh, big business leaders, manufacturers, um, city people. Um, so they make a lot of money, and this makes people agree. Uh, celebrity leadership. Washington won the Revolutionary War, will be president, and Franklin was the celebrity of his day because he was the Renaissance man. All right, so the Constitution passes. It needed nine states to ratify on June 1788. Needed support of big states. Virginia and New York ratify in June, July 1788. Ratified by all 13, actually, by May of 1790. The Bill of Rights is added in 1791, and amendments 1 through 10 made small states happy. So effects of the Federalist and Anti-Federalist papers, other than the formation eventually of Democratic and Republican political parties, um, compromise in the Constitution uh, is a big one here. Um, eventually, you know, obviously the, the Federalist wanted a strong centralized government and some state power. The Anti-Federalist wanted more state power, less um, central government power. And they also wanted our liberties upheld. So the, the best way to compromise was to um, ratify the Constitution, but also add the Bill of Rights to ensure that our liberties are being protected. And, and so those amendments, 9 and 10 especially, gave power to the states that uh, the Anti-Federalists were really looking for. Continued to debate about federal and state governments. Uh, again, Bill of Rights was added, future amendments, and then the formation of the first political parties. Ratification of the Constitution obviously was a huge effect of these two parties.